Hi, everyone. I'm Demma Rodriguez. I'm the head of equity engineering at Google. And today I'll be talking to you a little bit about a team I started called Equity Engineering, the impact and the opportunity of designing for Google's most vulnerable users first. I'm really excited to talk to you today. And thank you so much for being here with us. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about what equity engineering is. Equity engineering is a comprehensive approach to building equitable products for underrepresented and future users. And what does that mean? When I say equity, oftentimes people wonder if I'm talking about the stock market or financial products, but really equity is a concept and a, has a definition of providing the tools and services and opportunities to different users that they need in order to make sure that they have outcomes that suit their needs, but also that meet them where they are, right? So working across different communities, what are the tools and services and perspectives that need to be understood in order to make sure that we are building products and services that help all of our users and don't advantage some users to the disadvantage of others. But more about that in a minute. Let's get through the agenda and talk about how we're going to walk through this pretty complex topic. So the first thing that we're going to do is talk about what are our pillars? What are the guideposts that we use in order to frame this work? Then we're going to step into our goals. Fundamentally, what are we focused on? How do we do it? What is the model that we use in order to get the work done? And what is our approach in continuing to advance this work across Google? Lastly, we'll talk about the impact. What are some areas of opportunity and some traction that we've made? What is our moonshot? And by the way, what is a moonshot? What do Googlers mean when they say that? And then we'll talk about some key takeaways that you can incorporate into your own practice, into your teams, and hopefully into your company. So equity engineering, some fast facts about us. Equity engineering is a multi-domain cross product area effort that evaluates processes, consumer products, and internal systems. We facilitate more equitable experiences and outcomes for, through, for users through process experimentation in partnership with the Chief Diversity Office and all applicable product areas. We really have some lofty guideposts. The first one is we want to transform development. We want to infuse a mindset of diversity, equity, and inclusion throughout product development and engineering at Google. And we have a specific theory of change of where to start, so we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. How do we know where to start? How do we do this work? We want to centralize research. We really believe that ethical user experience research that is focused on constructing user journeys and product roadmaps that directly impact underrepresented or marginalized groups is where we begin as priority zero. We also want to make sure that we're building capacity. We want other teams and other technologists to understand how to approach this work independently. So we teach and develop technologists to understand and prioritize use cases that negatively impact underrepresented users. We also understand that underrepresented users look and act differently throughout the world. As a multinational organization, we know that we have different tools and different research for different places around the world. We really work on being multi-ethnic, multinational, cross-perspective in order to include as many users as possible. So we really are beginning as a horizontal team with scope that focuses on HR first-party tools, tools that are built by Google, for Google, and third-party tools, tools that are used across the industry that we have incorporated at Google. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, why start with HR first? Well, at Google, our hiring and professional development processes are very tailored to the way that Google does business. 
When I started this team, I wanted to focus on accelerating Google's goals to build a more diverse workplace first. It's a core philosophy that I hold and that I wanted to bring into the team around cleaning up your own home first. Our theory of change is that as we bring in more people from all walks of life, our products will be better and more inclusive by default if their creators come from more places around the world, from different socioeconomic classes, from different religions, perspectives, and walks of life. Therefore, we want to start with the most pressing issue. How do we make Google a workplace that reflects the beautiful variability and diversity of our communities around the world? This is a core value and something that differentiates our work from other product inclusion initiatives that seek to educate the existing workplace. Well, education is an important tenant of our mission. Equitable hiring, progression, and inclusive culture are our first priority. Secondly, we want to scale our impact by joining forces. We want everyone at the table. We want to make sure that Google program managers, engineers, product managers, UX researchers across the company have an opportunity to really focus on how we can advance these goals internally first and then more broadly throughout the industry and throughout the world. We also make sure that each of our partners are dedicated to the development of products and systems that work for our users, especially our most vulnerable users. We want to drive parity across those experiences. And taking a quick step back, driving parity means we want to make sure that our users who are enjoying the most benefits, who feel the most psychologically safe, and who are able to really advance their careers, that there is not a delta between their experiences and other groups. We want our groups that are having a more difficult time to have an easier go at building the best careers that they can at Google, at being progressed and being valued. And so therefore, our goal is really to make sure that first within Google and then throughout the industry and for all of our users, that everyone has the same opportunity and the same outcomes in how they're able to enjoy a career at Google, to enjoy our products, and also to benefit from the prosperity that comes from technology and the sector at large. That was a lot. And definitely those goals seem pretty good. Sounds really good on paper, right? But how do we get this done? Well, we get it done with a theoretical framework, a partnership model that helps teams understand how they can be successful, what are their core responsibilities, but where are the opportunities to collaborate? So from the key performance indicator side, what the opportunity assessments are with diversity, equity, and inclusion, we think it's really important to defer to the teams that have expertise in this area. And so in that regard, we partner really closely with the Chief Diversity Office to make sure that we understand what is Google's broad diversity strategy? What is the prioritization? And also, what are the opportunity assessments that we can carry forward? We then help to drive cultural change by creating pilots, training, and documentation for our technologists in order to help inform the product strategy, the area priorities, and team objectives and key results. And then lastly, we empower all of the teams across the diversity office and also product teams by providing consultations and referrals, either internally or externally to experts in industry, we help with prototypes and experiments so that we can innovate in ways that help us to create rapid opportunity assessments. And we do reviews for existing products that are in flight and ready to be produced or produced and ready to launch within Google. So now let's talk a little bit about the collaboration model and how it's driven so much impact here across our company. To date, and I, it's really difficult to process, but to date, just over the last 18 months, we have worked across 72 different teams across Alphabet. Oftentimes an issue that we think only impacts Google really impacts multiple of our bets. And so we've had the pleasure of really working across uh, the entire Alphabet community. And we've done that by helping to elevate sensitive use cases. 
Oftentimes, when we're thinking about marginalized users, we really want to make sure that we take the burden off of those communities from having to describe their own challenges with our processes and our products. And so we hope to elevate those sensitive use cases and help to protect users from further psychological harm. We also help to inform process design. So oftentimes in engineering, it's not just thinking about what the tools do, but it's also thinking about what are the processes Right? How do we create a professional development paradigm where users from all different kinds of backgrounds can learn and grow and understand what their next steps are? That then informs our product design. Right, For a lot of Google's processes, as we said, it's really unique to the way that Google does business. And so therefore, our products can be quite unique as well. Working product and process together helps drive mindful innovation that focuses on our underrepresented users. We also then help with launches. As we're getting ready to deploy these tools and processes, are we thinking about all of the right things? Do we have all our checks and balances in place? And then lastly, even once something is launched, there's a lot of change management that comes along. And so our program managers help with change management across the teams that we're working with to help lighten that load. What we found as we dug across our company is that there were many opportunities for us to work with different teams on improving products and processes. We have identified over 159 improvements. 81% of those have already launched. And we know that we're on track to make progress in 2020, which is really rewarding considering all the challenges that this year has brought. We see ourselves moving this work forward and helping to improve the space just a little bit, even through some of the hardest times. We wanna make sure that our growth is sustainable and that it can be, and that it is in fact sustained. And so our resourcing in 2020 and moving forward is around distribution across multiple disciplines. Here at Google, we call those disciplines ladders and it essentially refers to different domains of expertise. And so right now we're working with user experience, program management, product management, and software engineering. We believe that a cross-functional and cross-organizational model is gonna help our work to scale and it's gonna help everyone invest in this very important work. We also know that specificity matters. And so we maintain a core working group of 10 specialists that really think about equity cases across multiple topics that impact our company and industry. So back to this moonshot, what does it mean when Googlers say, we are aiming towards a moonshot or our moonshot? A moonshot is a Google term for any big, long-term, expensive project to solve an extremely challenging problem that has a chance of failing, but if we succeed, could fundamentally change society. And expensive can mean anything. It can mean time. It can mean sweat equity. It can mean financial resources or prioritization. But the term alludes to, fundamentally, this race between 1955 to 1972 to race to the moon as part of the Apollo program. Many said it wasn't possible. There were many failures along the way. And it's the path towards progress certainly wasn't linear, but it was definitely worthwhile. And so our moonshot is just as lofty and just as challenging. We believe that structural discrimination is a form of institutional discrimination. And we know that that has a real impact in engineering. We understand that systemic bias is an unintended outcome that results from a lack of representation of women, older workers, Black and Latinx people, non-binary and transgender people. But we do believe that we can dismantle this systemic bias in engineering globally. And that's really the core moonshot. We want to empower and drive access to the tech industry at large. We understand that in the rarefied air of companies like Google, there are many people who never get an opportunity to have their voices heard. And we want to make our company and our industry more accessible to those people, not just in the United States, but all over the world. We want to then share our findings in the open source community. We want to promote universal, equitable frameworks because this is really about improvement and affecting change, not just for ourselves, but the company to, to companies like us, to the industry, and to users and people at large. With that, what can we do to affect change? 
And since I'm sharing this with you, what can you do to affect change? The first thing that I'm going to ask you to do is to take a hard look in the mirror. At Google, we have the brand slogan, build for everyone. But how can we actually build for everyone when we do not have a representative workforce or engagement model that centralizes the community's feedback first? The truth is we can't. We have to really focus on our most vulnerable users. We have to be aware of the ways that our products can either advantage or disadvantage groups. And we have to start thinking about our most vulnerable users first. With that, we know that we can't build for everyone. We are building on behalf of everyone. We want to build with everyone. The work cannot happen in a vacuum, and it certainly does not happen or will not happen when the technology sector as a whole is still failing at representation in hiring and in retention. That said, we're also not going to pack up and go home. So how do we build for everyone? We build with our users. We need to engage our users across the spectrum of humanity, engage our users that are the least like us, and be intentional about centralizing them first, not as an afterthought. We also want to design for the user that has the most difficulty accessing the product. Building for those who have additional challenges are going to make our product better for everyone. Another way of thinking about this is never trade off accessibility or any other equity issue for short-term velocity. Measure once, measure twice, three times before you cut, right? Good, sound practice. Measure equity throughout your systems. Do not assume it. Recognize that your decision makers are also subject to bias and can be undereducated in the causes of inequity. So therefore you need mixed method research. You may not have the expertise to identify or measure the scope of an equity issue. That's okay. A lot of us weren't trained to understand this. And so while we're not responsible for the lack of knowledge, we are accountable to gaining the information. Remember that if you cater to a single user base, you may be disenfranchising another. These trade-offs can be hard to spot and impossible to reverse. So be proactive, partner with teams and individuals that are subject matter experts in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and don't be scared to go outside of your team or even outside of your company. It's a big task. It's a hard one. It is most definitely a moonshot, if not many. But I want to leave you with the thought that change is possible. The problems that we're facing with technology today, everything from surveillance to disinformation to online harassment are genuinely overwhelming. And it's okay if you have moments of feeling overwhelmed. We're not going to solve these problems overnight but we're also not going to solve with the same failed approaches of the past or just the skills we already have. So take a moment to think about what are the tools, services, and skills that have gotten us here? Meditate on that, but then further think, what are the tools, skills, and services that we need to get to the next iteration of what we would like technology to be and how we would like humans to access these tools? And who gets to be part of not just the prosperity, but also of the development of the tools and services that help people all over the world. We know that we need to change. And I want to leave you with the thought that it's possible for us to change if we all get in together. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you about learning about equity engineering.